In my previous video, we described how we could use integration to find the shear and moment diagrams for a uniform distributed load on a simple supported beam. The shear diagram is the integral of the loading uh, with respect to x, and then the moment diagram is the integral of the shear diagram with respect to x. Today, I'd like to go over how to draw shear and moment diagrams for some more complicated loadings. But before we do that, I want to start out with a few basic loadings that I have here, shown here uh, so we can build a library of, of what different shear and moment diagrams might look like. Um, and then we can use that to, to build off of that and, and draw a, a more complicated combined loading. Um, so always the first step when drawing shear and moment diagrams is to start by using just 2D equilibrium to define the reaction forces at, at the support. So here we have uh, the reaction at A and, and the reaction at B. And because this load is offset, the reaction at A should be greater than the reaction at B. Um, when we draw our, our shear diagram, anytime we have a point load, we can we know that there's going to be a discontinuity in our shear diagram in the direction of that point load and of that same magnitude. So uh, moving from left to right here, uh, we're going to start by going up uh, at the reaction at A. And then moving over, there's no loading in between A and the point load, so it's just going to be constant shear. And then here we're going to drop down. The magnitude of this jump upward is the same as the magnitude of the reaction at A. And the magnitude of this drop downward is the same as this point load. Um, and then again, between the two, there's no, there, there's no forces, so the, the shear remains constant. And, and then we jump back up, and the magnitude of that jump is equal to the, to the reaction at B. Um, so now if we want to draw our moment diagram, we know that the moment diagram is going to be the integral of the shear diagram. Another way to say that is the slope of the moment diagram is going to be equal to the values of the shear diagram. So the slope of the moment diagram is going to look be steep here, large and positive, and then smaller and negative all the way back to zero. And there's no moment at either ends of the beam because neither the pin nor the roller uh, can apply external moment to the beam. Um, and so there's the shear moment diagram for a... Um, for a point load, we just have a discontinuity in our shear diagram because of the point load, and then the moment diagram is the integral of the shear diagram. All right, I want to move on to something that's going to be a little more complicated. Um, we're going to look at these loads where we have a uniform increasing load um, going from, let's actually give these both numbers so that we can uh, draw the shear and moment diagrams. Let's say that this goes from 0 to, to 30 newtons per meter, and then this one goes from 30 newtons per meter down to 0. Let's say both of these beings are are 10 meters. That, that will be helpful in working, working the problems out. Uh, so again, the first step is to find the reaction forces. We can uh, take the sum of the moment at the pin here um, and find, find the reaction forces. Uh, in this case, we're going to have um, 100 newtons um, and, and 50 newtons. So if we can give this, this distributed load a function, then we can integrate to find the shear and then the moment diagrams. So, so what would that function be? Well, we could write this as uh, w of x is equal to negative 3 uh, newtons per meter times newtons per meter squared times x. Why is it negative? Well, it's because it's pointed downward. And this is kind of tricky because it looks like a slope, a positive slope. But because the load is increasing at a uh, downward direction, it's negative 3x. And so at x is equal to 10 meters, we have 30 newtons per meter. x is equal to 0, we have um, 0. And so this is the function. So then we can, we can actually write out, we said that, the, uh, we said that the, the shear is equal to the integral of w of x dx. Uh, in this case, that's going to be negative 3 halves x squared plus the constant of integration. That's really important uh, because our boundary condition, we know that if we get really close to this pin here, the shear is equal to this 50 newtons going upward. We have that discontinuity uh, right at the start, 50 newtons. So we're going to start up here um, at, at 50 newtons. And, and similarly, we're going we're gonna to end down here at 100 newtons. Um, and so this function here, uh, so the C then is going to become uh, 15 where, where we start here. So this function here, this is a uh, upside down parabola, um, a concave down parabola. And if we draw that out, it's going to look like it's got zero slope here. We said that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the loading. So this has constant loading, so it has constant negative slope. Here we have zero loading, and so we have zero slope. And the slope is becoming more and more negative. So it's going to get steeper and steeper 
as we go from left to right. So it's going to look like that. It's going to upside down forever. And that makes sense. Our, our function is a quadratic. So that's the shear diagram. Um, and in, a, in the same way, we can draw the moment diagram. The moment of x is equal to the integral of the shear. And that's going to be equal to uh, negative x cubed over 2. So again, we're left with a constant in integration. Now, at a pin, uh, there's no moment uh, being applied. And same with the roller. There's no moment being applied by the roller. And since the beam doesn't go past the pin, we know that the moment has to go to 0. So in this case, the constant of integration is going to be 0. We're going to start at 0 and end at 0. Um, and we also know that our, our slope is going to be um, 0, where the shear diagram crosses 0. So what this is going to look like is it's, it's also going to look kind of like a parabola, except for parabolas are, are symmetric, um, cubic functions are, are not. So this is a, a kind of like a, a non-symmetric parabola for the, for the moment diagram. If we were to look at this other case here, we could also give this a function. Um, and so we could, we could write our integrals out for the shear diagram, um, and we get 3x squared. Uh, so this is going to be a concave up parabola, um, minus 30x plus c. In this case, we're going to start now at 100 newtons. Um, so our c is going to be uh, plus 100. Um, and so we have our, our shear diagram. It's going to look. It's going to start up here at 100, um, and it's going to be uh, concave upward. So it's going to go. It's going to have zero slope. It's going to end at negative 50. That's going to be concave upward. So that's that's our uh, shear diagram for this guy. So you notice that. Uh, the shear diagrams aren't exactly mirror images of one another. Um, and the reason is both have positive shear on the left and, and negative shear on the right. Um, and so we can't just take the mirror image. We have to uh, flip the sign um, and then add that 30. Uh, but then if we go to the moment diagram, I think what you'll, you'll, you'll find is if we do the, the integral, then, then what you'll find is that the slope, again, is 0 here. And we have uh, a shape that looks, that does look like the mirror image uh, of of this one's moment diagram. So the moment diagrams are kind of acrylic uh, uh, across that axis, but the uh, shear diagrams are not. We'll now move into a problem that has combined loading. This beam is simply supported beam still, but now it has a uniform distributed load for the first four meters, then a decreasing distributed load for the next four meters. It also has a point load at uh, two meters of six newtons. So again, the first step is to always find the reactions. Now we, we can guess that the, the reaction at A is going to be greater than the reaction at B. And if we take the moment at A, we can get the reaction at B to be 5 newtons. And then if we do the sum of the forces in the y direction, we can get the reaction at A is 10, 10 newtons. So now using what we know from our previous uh, examples, we can guess what this shear and moment diagram is going to look like. So for the shear diagram, we can we can go ahead and start with the fact that it's going to start um, up at 10 newtons, and it's going to end at negative um, 5 newtons, because it has to jump up uh, at the end 5 newtons. So we have 10 newtons at the start and 5 newtons at the end. In between, we have a, uh, a uniform distributed load, so it's going to be linear. Uh, down, uh, so it's going to decrease by 1.5 newtons for every meter. So it's going to go down three meters in the first, or three newtons in the first two meters, uh, and then it's going to drop six newtons. Uh, we're going to have a, a six newton discontinuity, and then it's going to continue at that same slope of three newtons per meter, ending at negative two when at at that four meter mark. Um, after that. Uh, it's going to be a quadratic. It's going to have zero slope over here at the end because uh, the distributed load goes to, to zero. And the slope here is going to be continuous. It's going to be 1.5. So we can just trail this off into a parabola. And we have the shape of our, our shear diagram without doing any math at all. Um, of course, we could, we could integrate this and find the equation for this parabola and, and integrate this and find the equation for these lines. But um, there's really no need. Uh, now that we know what those those look like, um, we we're done. We have our our shear 
and, and moment diagram, or we have our shear diagram. For the moment diagram, we have, we could do the same thing. We have, um, we can guess that this, this section and this section are going to be parabolic, and then that this section is going to be a cubic function. Uh, we know that we have a pin on the left and a roller on the right, and the beam does not extend beyond those, and so um, the moment has to start and end at zero. There's no externally applied moments. Um, and so we, we start at zero, and we end at zero. And we're going to uh, begin uh, with a, a positive slope. So we have a, a positive slope. It's, and it's parabolic, and then there's going to be a, a, a huge transition in the slope. Uh, so there's going to be discontinuity in the slope, and then the slope approaches zero, and then continues down, and then uh, it's going to shift from a parabolic shape to a quadratic shape uh, at the point, uh, at the midpoint of the beam. Um, and so our, our moment diagram is going to is going to look like that. And if we wanted to calculate the, the maximum moment in the beam, well, we just need to find the, uh, the area under one of these halves. And, and this one would be easier to calculate. Here we have a, uh, a trapezoid. So we could say that the area of that is going to be um, 1 half uh, 10 newtons plus 7 newtons. Um, so half, half of the is going to be average this. Um, times uh, two meters um, plus the area of this little triangle is going to be uh, one half that, that we said that triangle was was one newton tall two-thirds meters wide um, and and that's going to give us the the maximum And that's going to give us the maximum moment in the beam. So uh, hopefully with enough practice uh, doing these shear and moment diagrams, you begin to see that, okay, uh, you start building up um, a library of what different uh, different loadings look like. So a point load is a, is a jump in the shear diagram um, and a discontinuity in the slope of the moment diagram. A uniform distributed load uh, is linear and a uh, increasing or decreasing distributed load is going to be a quadratic. You start building up that library of, of different uh, functions and using the end conditions to, to fill in your shear moment diagram. Um, and you get pretty quick at drawing these without doing any math at all. Uh, a, good, a good game to play with uh, some of your stu uh, fellow students, some of your peers while you study, is to uh, just make up a loading and, and see if you can uh, draw what the shear moment diagram should look like without doing any math. You might you might be a little bit off on where it crosses zero um, or uh, where it ends uh, or starts, but um, you should be able to get this shape just by breaking it down um, the way we did in this video. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to uh, ask any questions in the comment section below um, or subscribe or like us if you like this video. Uh, thank you.